This is Coom Curses for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted, as always, to be joined by Mr. Sam Jones. All right, mate? Yes, mate. How are you? I'm all right. You look well. Your beard looks well. You having that? Uh, your beard looks well. Yeah. Thought I'd give it a little... Thought I'd give it a try. How, can't, bo- it, how boring is it with no boxing? On it, Coogan, honestly. It... it <laughs> It's it's made me watch a lot more football, to be fair. But even football's getting out. I'm like, I'm back. It's, whether that's a good thing or not, because I'm a Derby fan, so whether that's a good thing or not, I don't know. But it's making me watch loads more, loads more football. So, um, but no, it's this shit, isn't it, without boxing? Yeah, I think we kind of not take it for granted, but I think when we have these periods where like a whole month without uh, any shows in the UK. We kind of, yeah. But Feb- when February does roll around, I think the shows are going to be coming thick and fast and we'll forget... Some good shows. There's some good shows as well. Now, to be honest, Coogan, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm gassed to watch Amir Khan against Cal Brook. I can't wait. I, I, I cannot wait for that fight. I'm going to the fight. I cannot wait to watch that fight. I've been trying to like play it down in a moment. Like, oh, that maybe it could have happened. If you'd... But I'm so excited to watch that fight. No, 100%. I think that's out of... Uh... A very busy February schedule. I think that is definitely the pick'em from the from the lot of those. Um, okay, let's just have a recap. Uh, back in December, obviously when we uh, last caught up and obviously spent a bit of time together out in Dubai. Um, yeah, uh, Probellum show in Dubai, and then obviously you had one the week after uh, in Newcastle. Newcastle, or was it Sunderland? Technically. Rainton, yeah, so it's like, I don't want to mix them two up because it's like that's a real no no. No, it's Rainton. So we'll in the north, north. We'll set, we'll, we'll like, well, yeah, in the northeast, that's a better way of, yeah, it, but it was, uh, it was Sunderland, but yeah, Rainton, Rainton. Okay, so yeah, Dubai. good show. Um, a successful world title defence uh, for Sonny Edwards. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, we see Sonny. We don't see him, we, we read Sonny every day. He's very vocal and active yeah. on our social media as always. Yeah, uh, there's always something going on, but in the ring, uh, someone who's very, very difficult to beat. Yeah, hundred hundred percent. He's like I kind of compared it that the two. Obviously, I'm not going to say because Sonny for me right now is definitely top five in the UK. He, he is. He has to be like from where from the talent he has. But you, like Lerone Richards, like, there's a bit of there's a there's they're quite similar in that in that in that sense. They're both absolute nightmares to fight. Sonny. I think we'll stand Martinez on his head, like like if that, if that fight happens. I think Sonny, Sonny is the best flyweight, and I think he could be the best super flyweight in the world in both divisions. I think he's that good. I think I watched him for the first. I've watched a lot of Sonny's fights, but that fight against Jason Mama, if you if you look closely, you watch, you appreciate how good he actually is. And people have said obviously Sonny like he's been clipped before, he's been dropped, but Sonny got hit with some decent shots in that fight and he had to stand and fight, he got a bad cut on his head and he dug deep and he could show he could dog it out as well. Um, he's going to be a very, very hard man to, to beat Sonny Edwards. Yeah, I mean, it was a really kind of eventful week that week with yeah. the Paul Butler situation, obviously. Crazy, yeah. And, and Sonny also kind of having a little bit of back and forth during the week with Mama's team. It was like kind of all going on that week. But um, ultimately, he's going to be judged on what he did in the ring. And he was very impressive, as he always is. Uh, yeah. But as a whole, the Probellum show in Dubai, I was there for it. It was a brilliant show. Uh, were you pleased with it? Yeah, it was, I thought it was really good. I think it's in the tri- um, there's going to be a few events this year, I believe, uh, with, uh, with Probellum in Dubai. And it was, it's, it's got all the ingredients, hasn't it, Dubai, Coogan, to be... An amazing like fight capital, hasn't it? D- Dubai. The Coca Cola Arena was amazing. One of the best arenas I've been to. The facilities were amazing. The layout, the way it was, it was really good. It was really, really good. I thought the, the fights on there was it, um, the fights were entertaining, weren't they? there? Was a few 50-50s on there. It was a really good fight and it capped off of a great performance by Sunny. So looking forward to head back there. Mm, absolutely. There was. Um... Kind of a star-studded lineup there as well, wasn't there? It was all kind of as Roy Jones was there, <laughs> there. I mean, it was just yeah, it was just a a great night and a good good start to for Prevellum in Dubai. And then obviously you went to Rainton as we mentioned earlier. Careful, careful. Yeah, we all got Rainton. everyone and every one of the team caught COVID. It's just everywhere, isn't it? Every, 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 everyone. These things are happening and fights are getting called off more and more due to COVID, but let's not go into kind of the whole COVID thing. But, um, yeah, how was the show in, in Rainton? 
I really enjoyed it, Coogan. I really, really enjoyed that show. Good to see Ritson back. It was great to spend time with Ricky Burns as well. It was good to see him back. Good character, Ricky. Joe Laws rolling around in a dressing gown. Um, the McCormacks were there. The great signings for Pro Bell, and they're going to be making their debuts very, very soon. But Mark, good. I'm Mark Dickinson. I'm so impressed with him. Like, like I'm like I'm a big fan of watching Mark Dickinson. He's going to be a an unbelievable fight. Like I would I, predictions. He'll be a world champion. Mark Thomas Patrick Ward was flawless. Um, Ritson, good comeback fight. Look, 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 look well in his fight. I thought it was re a really good show from top to bottom. Um, as we move into 2022, obviously we mentioned that there's no boxing on, but there's no shortage of things happening in boxing. You mentioned there the McCormack twins. We await kind of when they'll make their debut. We're assuming they'll make their debut on the same card. Yes or not? Yeah, you, you'd, 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 you'd think so, but, may, but maybe not. You, you, we don't, we don't, uh, it's, not, it's not been decided yet. Yeah, I mean, they're, um, we know how talented yeah. those... Those two are Luca and Pat, and I think they're going to be yeah. very entertaining outside of the ring as well. Handful, like a handful, but they're just what you see is what you get with them two. They're both they're both nuts, but talent wise, put your house and car two world two the first twins from the UK to be world champions, definitely unbelievable talents. The pair of them. When do you think they'll make their debut, Sam? <laughs> March, April. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to talk to you about um, <coughs> some other stuff going on in boxing. Uh, I did an interview with Eddie Hearn the other day. He was talking about the fight between um, Katie Taylor and Serrano, which is he's obviously working on with Jake Paul. Um, he said the fight... Interesting. Is, yeah, very interesting. He said the fight is... Uh, very likely to happen. Uh, MSG has been mentioned, etc. But I wanted to ask you, where, where does kind of Chantel Cameron fit into this mix? We know she's got her fight at some point in this four-way tournament that Hearn's put on. Yeah. Um, but where does she kind of figure into that with um, Taylor and that? It's a hard one because I think, yeah, Katie Taylor's like his Anthony Joshua if you know what I mean, uh, in, in the women's division. Katie Taylor, she makes good purses. She's a phenomenon. Everybody loves Katie Taylor. Now, it's hard for him because it's like, Chantel Cameron's kind of the Dillian White in that, rela in that, in that, in that, re that re relationship because it's, I, I personally believe, I don't know whether it's a good comparison, but like, I personally believe Chantel beats Katie Taylor. I really do. I, I think she beats her. And Chantel's not, uh, uh, not nowhere near as a big a draw as somebody like, Katie Taylor. So I think that Eddie's not really mentioning that fight as much because I think he, I believe he knows Chantel Cameron will beat um, Katie Taylor. So he's kind of not mentioning it, mentioning it too much. But I, I believe she deserves her big kind of, her big moment, her big, like a, a, a profile fight. Even like a Chantel Cameron. I know Terry Harper's moved up in weight. That's a great fight for Chantel Cameron. Or Natasha Jonas, something like that. They're, they're the kind of fights I believe Chantel needs, needs, needs right now to probably get herself the Katie Taylor fight. But I can't see the Taylor fight happening because I believe everybody knows. I, I honestly believe Eddie and everyone else believes that Chantel will beat Katie Taylor. That's my honest, honest opinion. Hmm. Um, it's an interesting situation with Chantel. Obviously, it's in the, say in the middle, it was only kind of two fights uh, as part of this um, undisputed four-way that they were doing. Um, yeah. So she's still got to complete that side of it as well I've not heard much about it I've not heard much she's meant to be fighting that Ke Ke Kelly Reese or something like, but I've not heard I've not heard much like, about that like, when the fight's going to be announced I just think I think as it stands right the two best female fighters from the UK you've got um, Savannah and Chantel first or second either or and then you've got everybody else in another part but I think those two are the, the, the standouts I think they're the best in the in the in the UK by by some distance, if I'm honest. Yeah, I think a lot of people would agree with those comments. Yeah, that's my uh, that's my opinion on on that. And I think, listen, Savannah's going to end up fighting Clarissa Shields. I'm sure that that fight's inevitable. But I want to see Chantel get like her her big kind of uh, 
a big profile moment, if you know what I mean, like Terry Harper. But the, the fight that I honestly think, I think Katie Taylor against Santel is a better fight than Katie Taylor against Serrano. I know that's not the biggest fight. That's clearly Serrano against Katie Taylor is the biggest fight in women's boxing. Got no problem with that. But I think a better fight would be Chantel against Katie Taylor. You'd get some of the the the. Remember when Katie Taylor fought uh, Pursue? That kind of war. That it'd be a brilliant fight to watch. And I think Chantel deserves the fight. To be honest, I don't think she gets the. Uh, I don't think she gets the credit she deserves sometimes because she's done it the hard way, Chantel. Mm, yeah, I'll agree with the fact that she's definitely done it the hard way. Um. Moving on from there, purse bids have been postponed again for Tyson Fury and Dillian White. Yeah. We found out today. Uh, are we to assume that they're trying to make a deal? You, you, listen, you'd hope so. You, you'd hope so. People t take Tyson too seriously sometimes. You know when, he, when Tyson talks and stuff like, I don't like, whenever Tyson does an interview, I literally think the opposite to what he's just said. Like, so you, you know what he's like, Coogan. Like, so when he says all oh, about mentioned Dillian White. I think Tyson does want to fight Dillian White. And I think that fight will happen. And the build-up will be better than a build-up would be than if, say, Tyson fought Anthony Joshua. The build-up with him and Dillian will be absolutely brilliant to watch. You can only imagine how good that build-up's going to be. Um, and a, hopefully a good fight at the end of it. So I, I, I'm confident that fight happens. I don't care what channel it's on as long as the fight happens. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's been delayed twice now. It was obviously meant to have taken place last week. It was yeah. then meant to have taken place tomorrow. Now it's been extended till Friday. So we can only hope that that is the reason for that, is a deal is trying to be uh, yeah. ready before it gets to a purse bid. So, um, I mean, it's a fight that you know that top rank are going to obviously bid um, very hard yeah. on. And so was Eddie Hearn and the zone. So it would be a big... It would be, you'd imagine the zone would do, have to do that fight pay per view, though. That's um, the only way. Yes, it's, it's, it's the only way of like making that fight viable on that, on that, uh, on the app. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's the only way of it, of it happening. So I don't know, like, all I want to see, I just want to, it's, it's like somebody, uh, I can't remember who it was, but they were talking about Anthony Joshua if he fights, who's sick and loses, it's, he's, he's done. Um, I don't believe that for a second because I still want to see, I don't know about you, like you've got Tyson against Dillian White. I want to see Anthony Joshua against Dillian, uh, against um, Deontay Wilder. Even if he loses against Usyk, I want to see Anthony Joshua against Deontay Wilder. I want to see them all fight each other. Joe Joyce in that mix. I want to see them all fight each other. There's some great fights we made in the heavyweight division. Tyson against Dillian, Joe against Dillian White, Dillian White against, rematch against Anthony Joshua. There's so many great fights to be made in the heavyweight division. Mm. One well, of those fights I don't want to see, though, is Dillian White, is, is, is Derek Chisora against Deontay Wilder. I definitely don't want to see that. Yeah, I mean, I think <sighs> those comments were kind of blown out of proportion. But I think it, the question was asked to Eddie Hearn about Wilder, and then he's obviously answered it and said that he did like the fight for Derek Chisora, and then it's kind of spiralled from there. Yeah, um, I, I, I don't like that fight. I mean, Derek, you wouldn't back against Derek in, in a fight like that, but I suppose... Derek could take the fight. If the money's right, Derek's taking the fight. Derek will fight anyone if the money's right. You know what he's like. But I'm saying, like, for Derek, at 38 years old, who's been in a lot of hard fights, yeah, a lot of hard fights, keep him away from Deontay Wilder. Because, listen, Derek would cause Deontay Wilder problems until Deontay Wilder's right hand lands. Mm. And it will land. And nobody wants to see the results of what happens when that right hand lands with Deontay Wilder. I want to see Derek Chisora against Ariola. Eddie was talking about Ariola against Dillian. That's a great fight for Dillian White. Or Ko Kovna no, Kovnatsky. Derek Chisora, yeah, for Derek. Somebody like that. They're great fights for Derek. Derek's got a few good nights left in him. Give him those type of fights, those fights that, he could, that he's going to go out there and, and probably win. I think he'd stop Ariola. I think he'd stop Kovnatsky as well. What is your, just going back to the situation with Tyson Fury and, mm -hmm. can you hear this? Yeah, yeah. I have the same thing as well, don't worry. <laughs> can you, <laughs> uh, I've lost my train of thought here. Um, the situation regarding Dillian White and Tyson Fury, I mean, I know it's a little bit of old news now, but the initial kind of split, what was your thoughts on that? I mean, the 80-20 split. It's a hard one, Coogan, because... From my, my point of view, it's 
and the way I've always understood it, it's about the, it's about like your, your purses, like your last few purses. And I think the WBC have, have like taken that into consideration, but I, I don't, I don't know, like, because it's, who was Dillian's last fight? Was it against Povetkin? Yes. So you can't really judge him off that last purse because a lot of Dillian's fights, his last two fights have been behind closed doors, in my opinion. So like they're never going to generate as much money as, as his fights would have generated if he boxed at the O2 Arena. But I, I, it, it sounds harsh. It does sound harsh. But I don't know, like, because t- t- Tyson, Tyson's a superstar, isn't he? So it's a hard one, but maybe, maybe it is a bit harsh. Maybe it should have been 70 30. It's the only sport, isn't it, where people are like that concerned over speaking purses yeah. for boxers. I mean, it's. 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 it's, part it's part of should be having more, not just Dillian in general, but I'm just talking about in. People are so concerned about people's purses. You, you've got to be, remember as well, like when Eddie says, oh, he's taking to consider the amount of time Dillian's been mandatory for that title. Well, it kind of got messed up, didn't it? Because when he got beat by Povetkin, it kind of knocked him off, the, took him out of the queue again. He's only been mandatory really for a, 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 some, some months, hasn't he? Like it wasn't that before. But realistically, Dillian White should have got a world heavyweight title shot ages ago. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, ages and ages ago, Dillian should have got a world title shot. So he deserves it, and and I want I want to see that fight for the for the for build up purposes, <laughs> for the build up for the fight. I, I want to I want to see that fight. It's a great fight for British boxing. So okay, yeah. So talking about Anthony Joshua there, obviously, wide speculation for the last six weeks or so, seven weeks ago, that um, you know he will no longer be working, especially for. Right. Usyk rematch with Rob McCracken. Uh, very unclear because no official statements come out. We've seen kind of snippets and from what Joshua said and also him spending that time with various trainers in, well, America and Dubai as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. So what is your kind of assessment of what's been going on with Joshua regarding his trainer? I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a hard one for me to really comment on because, like, after that fight, yeah, Every time I see Joshua, like he's got the so his entourage gets bigger every single time I see AJ. Do you know what I mean? Like, like he's got the the main guys that have always been there: you, Freddie, KD, and um, Will. Like, like that, they're all there. But the, the the entourage just gets bigger, and he's got so many people like in his like in his corner. I don't, Rob McCracken's a great trainer. Do you know what I mean? Like a proven great. He's done wonders with the GB setup. Great. Great system, but like you've got Rob McCracken in there, you've got others in there. I just think he needs one trainer, one voice. That's it. He doesn't need like, oh, let's bring in somebody else. Let's like just choose your trainer, whoever's best, whoever you think's best for you. But like, and 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 do that. But like, my my problem is is like whoever. I don't know. I don't want to. It's hard for me to like say this, but like, I'm not a trainer. You're not a trainer, yeah? But if you were advising Anthony Joshua in that fight, Coogan, as like a non-trainer, just, just, just on an outside looking in, would you tell him to stand off and box Usyk? No chance. You're not winning the fight. You're, not, you're just not winning the fight. If you stand off and try and box the boxer, you've got to lean on him. You've got to be aggressive. You've got to, you've got to take big chances and, and use your, your attributes, your size and your strength and your power and try and and try and get him out of there. Standing off and boxing him was a, an insane idea. So whether it was AJ that decided that, Rob, whoever decided that was a good idea, it was, was way off. Is it a mistake, do you think, uh, for Joshua, if he does uh, part ways with McCracken? Is that a mistake? It depends, because AJ is like, it's kind of strange, isn't it, with AJ? Like one minute he's working with, Somebody the next minute you're hearing he's going with bloody what's his name um, Eddie Reynoso. Then you hear, hear rumors Mikey uh, 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 Robert Garcia. It, it's it's hard. I, I mean, it's it's a, it's, a, it's it's a hard one because it's like has he had enough time to change his? Listen, it, one thing's for certain is 
if Rob McCracken were looking after AJ now, Rob McCracken's going to change that. Everything's going to be different, isn't it? It's going to be like, listen, go for him. Do you know what I mean? From the, so w- whether he's going to have enough time to change, to change his, like, adapt to this fight, I don't know whether a trainer's going to have enough time to implement his, his ideas in, in that space of time, is, is the answer, if that, made, if that kind of made sense. I don't, I don't know. But were changes needed? Yes, I do think changes were, were needed. And um, I think going to somewhere like Big Bear would be good for AJ. Away from everybody, go there, d- d- forget the Lucas Aid adverts and the, and the Hugo Boss adverts and all that kind of stuff. Go there. Because this fight is really is like, it's massive for AJ. And I know it's massive up here for AJ as well, because if he loses, like, he, he took this defeat hard, you can tell. During the interviews he's been doing, you can, you can feel it's affected him mentally, like, like it's annoyed him. And... Um, the one thing about AJ is he never makes excuses and I respect him so much that he's never once you know when some of the fighters oh no this is wrong my back my back was hurting you know, AJ's never said that he's just like listen I'm fucking sick of losing so I, I respect AJ massively as a fighter as a man really respect him um, but if I wasn't saying if I was advising AJ I'd be like listen go and take your camp and go and do it in the mountains go and go train in Big Bear I really would go away from everything are you talking about a change of Scenery, are you talking yeah, about change of scenery. He needs a change. He needs a change of scenery. That's what I, I, I honestly think. I think he needs a complete change of scenery. Have a small team that he trusts around him. KD, Freddie, like like, but not your your bag carrier, your mouth guard carrier, your Lucas A bottle carrier, your your suit holder, and like, like and your back slappers all saying, "Well, well done." After you make a mistake in the ring, oh, everything's good. Everything's good, Josh. Everything's good. Get rid of all the, those those people because they're, they're no they're no they're no good. Just keep the people the, the the keep a small group, a small core, small core team. I don't believe in big massive entourages. It's interesting to see what happens because if that fight is is going to happen in April and we're kind of in the middle of Jan now, we're talking about what three months possibly. Between. Coogan, if I was advising Anthony Joshua, I wouldn't even take the, the Usyk fight. I wouldn't. I just wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. I, w- as a, I would just say, listen, let him fight Tyson Fury and, you, and sign a contract and you fight the winner. I personally think that's better business. But AJ, fair play, you can see what he's thinking. He's thinking, listen, I want to get, I want to get my revenge and that's the man he is, fair play. But if I was advising him personally, I'd be like, keep, leave, that way, leave, leave that well alone. Styles make fights in boxing. Usyk's got a style that's a pain in the ass for everybody. It really is. It's a pain in the ass for everybody. Have you super fight with Tyson Fury afterwards? Because I believe Tyson Fury would beat Usyk pretty handily as well. It's interesting to see. But I think as kind of this month draws out, by the end of the month, I think a lot of these situations we're talking about, possible fights, they're going to be nailed in, aren't they? The, the, the Dillian White, Tyson Fury situation, that's going to be resolved, hopefully, very shortly. And then, yeah. I suppose, this is all a knock-on effect for AJ Usyk, etc. So... Yeah. It's... Um, it's it's, it's, uh, it's, it's mad, mad times, isn't it, in, in boxing? You've got... Nobody wants to fight Ergovic. He, he's, an, he's another one he's a problem in the heavyweight Tony division Yoka does apparently so. listen that fight won't happen I don't believe that fight will happen for a second Yoka's took that fight he's, he's, he's agreed to fight Martin Bacoli he's got to fight Martin Bacoli he's signed he signed a contract to fight Martin Bacoli he's done that because he knows full well that oh everyone else has ducked him so I'm going to say yes I'm going to fight him He's got no intention. I'd be staggered if, he, if that fight yeah, happens. A, a part of me believes what you're saying there. I mean, when I, I I'm telling you, I can see straight. I can see. I can see straight through that. I can see straight through that situation. Yoka will not. Listen, if he does, fair play, Tony. Well, well, well done. But I don't believe for one single second that fight happens. I believe he's took that fight for 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 clout purposes. He, he said publicly, "Oh, I'll take that fight." It's like. Say, for example, I don't know, I, I'm just, for example, like Joe, Joe would fight, uh, Joe would fight Ergovic, but say like if Joe's got, a sign, Joe's got a signed agreement, I'm using Joe for an example, and he's, and he, and he, and, and he's got an agreement, of, like a, re, a signed contract to say, I'm going to fight whoever. Oh no, I'll fight Ergovic. You can't, you, you can't just break contracts like that. I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't, if, long so short, I don't believe, I think Yoko's literally just seen that situation, but you know what? Joe Parker's 
effectively turn the fight down. Who else has turned the fight Luis down? Luis Ortiz. He was never going to... Luis Ortiz being the bogeyman in the division is a myth. I've been, I, I was trying to get that fight for, for Joe to fight. They, they, they don't return... They, they don't want to fight Joe. Luis Ortiz is 130 years old. He doesn't want to fight... He doesn't want to fight someone like Joe Joyce or Hergovic because he'd get badly hurt, to be honest with you. So, Yoke has looked at that situation for, oh, everyone's turning down. I could get a bit of profile here. I'll fight. I'll fight Ergovic. You've got no intention of fighting Ergovic, mate. No intention of fighting. That's my honest opinion. He's got to fight Martin Bacoli. And that's a hard fight as well for him. Yeah, that is a hard fight. 100%. With your old mate, Billy Nelson. Yeah, listen. Listen, one thing about Billy, he's an annoying fucker. But he's always, he backs his guy. He thinks his guy would, he, 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 thinks, he thinks his guy would literally beat everybody in the heavyweight division. Fair play. And, and listen, he, he, and fair play to him. They're going to go to hopefully get their, their opportunity and go to France and fight Tony Erkin. Listen, Billy's going to have his moment, isn't he? Like he's, he's always said that Bacoli weren't at the races, like mentally for the Michael Hunter fight. So he's going to have his big moment, isn't he, in France? And, and who's saying he won't win? I think he's got a huge chance of winning that fight. I thought Yoka didn't look any. I don't think I've not, I've not really been impressed with Yoka as a professional. Okay, um, one more thing I want to ask you about. I don't know where this quote came from, but there was something I read about Jake Paul about his next opponent, uh, about the boxing purists not liking it. Whoever his next opponent is, Canelo. That was a quote from from someone from that was close to Canelo, wasn't it? Saying that Canelo's next fight, the boxing purists won't like. Canelo's next fight. Sorry, I'm. I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Sam, let me just re ask that because that's what I actually meant and I've just worded it wrong. Yeah, yeah, cool. Right, one more thing before I do let you go, uh, Sam. Um, Canelo, um, yeah, I think there's a quote going about about his next opponent is some, someone that the boxing purist won't like. Um, what do you make of this? Um, all roads lead to Jake Paul. <laughs> um, I don't know, Coogan, if I'm honest, mate. Like, like if it, I, unless it's an exhibition, surely there's got to be a contract to say Canelo can't hit him, like, in certain areas of the body because I, I don't, you don't wish that, I, I, honestly, I'm saying this, like, that fight's, like, dangerous for Jake Paul's health if that actually happens. Like, I actually think that... Reference to Jake Paul. Yeah. Huh? You think yeah. That? It could be like you, you just don't know in this crazy sport, do you? That like you, you, Marius Bradis is getting a, a flipping tattoo of Jake Paul on his leg to try and get the uh, to get the scrap, isn't he? So he's obviously lost his mind trying to get the uh, trying to get the the the, the big uh, the big payday, payday, payday. <laughs> um, but yeah, if Canelo takes that fight, um, if if that fight happened, there's, there'd have to be a contract in place saying Canelo can't. It'd have to be exhibition vibes because. I would worry, for, and I mean this. So people say, "Oh, I worry for." I would worry for his health, Jake Paul. Like he'd be permanently injured, and nobody wants to listen. As much as Jake Paul irritates anyone, no one wants to see no one get permanently injured. But Canelo could permanently damage Jake Paul if that fight happened. So, if it's not Jake Paul, or that's re not in any reference to Jake Paul, then who? Could yeah. Reference to? Um, you never know, do you? It could be. Uh, Conor McGregor who knows you just don't know do you like, you, you believe it's someone definitely outside of who he potentially it, should it depends like. because that, what do you mean the boxing purists won't like like any Canelo fight a boxing purist likes because Canelo's got everything hasn't he he's, 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 he's the world's best at the moment like he's got everything he can fight he can box he can do everything so I don't know where they're coming with where they're coming with that. With um, I want to see Canelo against Charlo, Charlo. or or, Batur or Baturbiev. They're, they're great fights. Charlo can cause Canelo real problems, you know, in that I fight. Like but that fight. And I like the Baturbiev fight. Yeah. yeah, and the Baturbiev fight. But yeah, Jake Paul just he can just keep doing Jake Paul things, can't he? Like I've got no problem with Jake Paul. I think he's an amazing promoter. I think he rubs people up the wrong way, which I do think quite, is quite funny sometimes. I tell you what I'd like to see Jake Paul. I want to see Jake Paul against Tony Bellew. <laughs> I want to see Jake Paul against Tony Bellew. That's what I want to see. And I want to see Tony Bellew be announced as Pretty Ricky Conlon. <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay, so yeah, um, yeah, just a little bit of a catch up there. Um, loads going on. As soon as this month kind of fizzles out uh, from the start of February, a lot of things going on and, and a lot of stuff happening for Probellum as well. Yeah, listen, lot, lots of stuff. Some announcements coming very, very soon for, for Pro Bellum. Um, hopefully, you're going to have a great year of boxing, aren't we? All the, some big fights happening. Hopefully, the big fights this year really do happen. Crawford against Spence. Let's see that fight. I want to see that fight. Um, Dave Allen against uh, Chris Lovejoy. Dave Allen. No, we want to see Dave Allen against Babich. And we want to see... Johnny Fisher against Christopher Lovejoy. <laughs> One Christopher Lovejoy. One Christopher Lovejoy. Johnny Fisher would knock Christopher Lovejoy out within 30 seconds. Like, I promise you that. Like, like, he, sold, he sold most of the tickets for Ali Pally himself, by the sounds of it. Yeah, listen, I, I remember when, when I rang Ed, Eddie genuinely to say, oh, yeah, I've got this heavyweight. He's like, oh. like, you could see he was not interested at all. I had to like, kind of twist his arm to say, listen, no, take a chance on him. He can definitely fight. But I saw the, the potential with Johnny Fisher and it's all coming into fruition now. And, and uh, listen, Eddie and Matchroom have got a, tr- a tremendous young heavyweight with Johnny and he's a, listen, he's an attraction, isn't he? He's, an, he's a serious attraction, isn't he now, Johnny? Absolutely, um, making a lot of noise and and shout out, listen, and Lerone Richards as well. Like, little give a mention to him. Like, literally one of the best fighters in the world, Lerone Richards. Technically, technically gifted. He could he could win titles at, at super middleweight, light heavyweight. The world's his oyster. Beat Gongora, somebody who nobody wanted to fight Gongora. Nobody wanted to fight Gongora, and Lerone beat him in first gear. Dusted him in first gear, no problems. So I think the world's Lerone's oyster and I think he's going to go on to win a world title, definitely. Okay. Well, Sam Jones, appreciate your time this uh, Monday evening. Um, Is it Monday? I don't even know. It was Monday. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be catching up hopefully in person next time once uh, sure, yeah, sure. We're back out and about, which we will be shortly. And uh, have you got anything else you'd like to add, mate? No, absolutely not. Thank you for, for um, speaking to me. I'm a little... Uh, Speak to you soon. Sam Jones, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV and we'll definitely catch you again soon. Nice one, Coogan.